Hello, I'm Rick Stivers. I'd like to welcome you to Young Martin's Reels. Today's project is going to be another fail video. Now, I say fail, I'm still going to service this and it's going to become a functional reel, but it's going to have a problem and uh, it's going to go off to uh, Ken in Georgia also. So this is another one of those, these reels that he's going to redo. This is a Sears Roebuck model. Man, I don't even know if I can read this thing. I'll have to put it under the magnifier. 779.414221 reel. And uh, if you need a close up of that, there it is. Uh, let's do it this way. There, it's better focused. Okay. And somebody engraved a number over here on it. And this reel is mostly functional. And this reel would have been a full repair, ready to go. I was going to send it to Ken anyway to get it repainted and then let him repaint it and uh, do his little uh, reel magic with it. But then I was sitting there watching TV and I was at the end of fixing a bunch of reels and I was tired and I got sloppy. And when I got sloppy, I broke something. And if you look up here, you'll see these parts laying up here along with there's a broken screw. And what happened is that I got careless. Hey, baby. All right. Um, anyway, what happened was the um, drag clicker on this was completely gummed up full of grease. And rather than just it wouldn't move. It couldn't budge it. And so I tried to unscrew the screw out of it. And rather than just take it and put it in my parts cleaner and let it do its work, it's magic to where it would have broke all this, the tightened up grease out of it. Instead, I tried to take the screw out and I forced it and I broke it off. So that's the fail that this reel has. It uh, There's the screw that came out. Of, and now I had a swore this morning before I left that I found a screw, a replacement screw for can to put in this but I don't see it laying here on my bench anywhere so I'm not real sure what I did with it hopefully it'll turn up anyway um, this is going to be heading off to Georgia but in the meantime we can still go through and do a service on this reel and uh, get it all cleaned up and fully functional again well everything except that drag clicker everything else is going to work on it okay so let's get busy on this we're going to start off. I've already got the spool off. Next, we're going to come over here and take off the side plate. Oh, by the way, let's see. Anti-reverse on this thing sometimes works, sometimes doesn't work. You can hear it where it's trying to engage and it's not catching. I think it's probably just gummed up grease in it. So uh, let's go ahead and remove the screws out of the side plate. With those removed, we can take the co side cover off. Okay, and it's got some old grease in it, but that's about it there. All right. We'll take this pin out, and that should allow us to remove the axle shaft. And it did. Okay. Got that out. Let's take out the crosswind block, and that's pretty nasty, so I'm not even going to lay that on my bench like that. Let's go ahead and wipe it off real quick. All right, there's crosswind block cleaned up. Set that over to the side. Oh, I might have just made a big mistake. No, crosswind isn't going to affect it. Okay, we're going to see if we can unscrew this. I was thinking I might have to take a pin out right here, but I'm hoping this is going to unscrew. From, there we go. Okay, so it does unscrew from the main gear. Okay, I got the handle off. This handle is a collapsible handle. Where you just screw it, and it allows it to drop down we'll clean that up a little bit and put some oil in there okay with that done you can't take the main gear out without removing the uh, nut from here that looks like about a 14 millimeter let's see that's not even tight okay 
that come, the nut comes off. I'll set that over to the side. There should be a locking plate here. There is. Okay, it's kind of greasy, but aside from that, it's okay. And we'll need to get some of that corrosion off to make it a little prettier. All right, there comes the rotor off. And this rotor looks like it's got a shim. Okay, it has one shim in it. I think it's just one. Yep, just one. Okay, we'll clean that up good. And we're going to take that rotor apart today, I think. Oh, there went the pinion. The pinion dropped out from the back. Is there any shims on the pinion? No, no shims. Any here? No. All right. That takes the pinion off. It's pretty nasty looking too. Let's wipe it out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to have to do a little bit of scrubbing. It's, this thing's got some beefy gears in it. Look at the size of these things. Big teeth. Okay, that grease doesn't want to just slide off. So I think what we're going to do... Hang on, let's, let's try my wire brush on it and see if it cleans it up. If not, we'll be putting it in the parts cleaner. But it looks like it's coming off okay. All right. That big pinion gear cleaned up nice. There's no sign of wear on that at all. Okay. Now, with that done, we should be able to slide the main gear out. Okay, there's the main gear out, and again, it's something that needs to be wiped off, cleaned up. Okay, well, it actually cleaned up okay. It looks like it's got some minor corrosion damage, but aside from that, it looks okay. Let me see if I can do something with this backside, though. The teeth on this anti-reverse are quite sharp, so there's really not a whole lot of reason I can see uh, for that, for this to be slipping. So the problem does not appear to be with this gear. Let's see. Let's move on into the case deeper and see what we find. All right, here's our anti-reverse. And it's got a lever. Okay, there's the lever. All right, well, it's got a spring. It seems to be moving okay. It doesn't appear that there's any good reason I can see why it doesn't uh, engage properly. And I guess we'll take that out and clean it good. Maybe it's just not enough tension on the spring. Maybe the spring's a little bit sprung. It's kind of heavy spring. But we'll try to stretch it out just a little, see if we can improve how it's grabbing. All right, let's see. Take, pop this out. Uh, it doesn't want to come out. Okay, so let's rotate this to here and see if it will come out. There we go. Okay, so that's got to be in that upward position for this to come out. And even then, it's got to go in behind that. Okay. Let's see what we got here. We got some old grease down in there. Maybe that's catching... Yeah, maybe that old grease is catching on it. Uh, maybe. We'll scrub that up good. Let's get that piece out. And if this will unscrew easily, we'll take out the spring. If it Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to take a chance on breaking another screw off. Okay. There it is. Let's take the spring out. Wow, it's a long spring. Okay, it's a dual spring. Okay, so one part of it goes to the back and rides against the cam for the anti-reverse. And the other side of it rides out here. Let's go ahead. We're going to stretch that out just a little bit. There we go. All right, maybe that will take care of it. Um, I don't see a lot of point in undoing this screw here and taking this cam off um, if Ken decides he wants to take that off for the paint job, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and see if it's going to break loose for him. We'll at least have that much knowledge for him. Um, oh, the screw's already loose. Okay, so, well, we might as well take it out since the screw's loose. Okay. 
There you go, Ken. You'll be able to take that off easily. Okay, there we go. So the handle should then slide off of the post. Like so. All right, and that will then come drop right out. Okay, so that's all disassembled there. And we'll scrub this up good, clean all the heavy grease out of it. And maybe some of that was catching, keeping the anti-reverse. I don't know. I don't know what was causing it to not function. We'll see when we get it back together if we've got it cleaned up with some new fresh grease. But that's what was inside it there. All right. So I'm going to spray this down and let it soak. WD-40 does a marvelous job of breaking down old stiff greases. I don't see a bearing in there, so it appears to have a bushing. Okay, we'll set that over to the side. Let's go ahead and wipe out this side plate since we're just kind of wiping everything down. All right, there we go. That's another one down. Move that over to there. And that may need a little bit of attention. Not much, though. It's actually in really good shape. But it does appear that it could use just a hair more bend. There we go. All right. Now, let's take this um, rotor apart. First off, we're going to bring this camera back this way a little bit. Okay. And let's see what it's going to take to unscrew this. Um... There we go. Okay, let's unscrew the nut off of the end of the bale wire. And there's a small washer on the outside. It's a locking washer. Let's see what this looks like under there. Let's say there's nothing on this side. And then the roller is pretty dirty underneath, but aside from that, it's in pretty good shape. Let's get the lock washer back on. Put the nut back on. And it's got that side. Okay, we'll go to the other side and unscrew it. There we go. We'll slip that out. Okay. That's got that off. Let's see what we're dealing with. It's a pretty strong spring we got in here. Hoping we're not going to regret taking it out. Um, tell you what we're going to do, uh, we'll go ahead and take it out. Let's see what we got. Okay. I'm going to hold this down so the spring can't shoot out. Okay. Then we're going to ease this up and over like so when that comes out. And there is the spring for that. Pretty nasty looking, but aside from that, it's all right. Okay, that's those come off. That brings us down to this one in here. Let's go ahead and unscrew it as well. And we gotta keep a close eye on this spring, how it's in there. If you look, okay, the spring just wrapped under the head, okay, and yeah, its purpose in life is to push this, this direction, which it was doing just fine, and uh, yeah, there's some gunk up in there, we'll clean that up, all right, there's the screw for that, all right, now the rotor is apart, and this is exactly how Ken is going to have to take it all the way down to this point to do the restoration on this reel. And uh, overall, it's a very solid reel. I like it. Uh, we got some parts that are going to be going in the parts cleaner, though. Let's see if this will fit inside my parts cleaner basket. And it did. Okay, we're going to drop the spring in. The spring needs to be inside the ball, I think. OK, 
Okay, we're gonna take, I'll tell you what we're gonna do with this. We're gonna take this um, hook off of the ball because it keeps getting snagged in the basket. So we're gonna take that off. All right, we've got the spring in there. I'm gonna put in a screw, put this lever. We'll put Oh, this is the screw that I, f I did find a screw to go in this. And it's in there, but I'm afraid that the shoulder isn't quite long enough. So, Ken, you may end up having to either find another screw or thin this just slightly so that that shoulder will come through and allow this to pivot. And we'll set all that down in the parts cleaner. All right, for those of you who think this just looked like old wet grease, it was all caked up in here. Let's take a look at what this grease looks like coming out. Yeah, that's what I was trying to take the screw out of when I broke it. And will that dissolve in the parts cleaner? Yeah, if I had put it in a parts cleaner, it probably would have dissolved that. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what that stuff was like up inside there. And uh, yeah, that's why I damaged it. While we're here, let's go ahead and uh, take this spool apart and clean the drags. pretty much have everything clean now and uh, I had actually started putting this back together and realized I hadn't hit the, the record button so let's go ahead now we're going to put this trip lever in first it goes in like so and it's going to fit over that little boss right there it sits above it and uh, the next piece it's going to sit in there it's going to be the spring and I'm not going to worry too much about getting the spring set just yet I think I think we're just going to set it in place and I'll worry about setting it in uh, hooked a little bit later. In the meantime, I've got to try to get this screw in and get it started in that hole with my big club fingers. And uh, I would like for it to sit on the end of a screwdriver, but the screw's too heavy for that. It just falls right off. Okay, I've got it started. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get hold of the end of the spring right here. And I've got to get it to go over to this side like that. Okay, so it's going to hook on there. And then I got to slide it back, and we got it to get it to go onto this shoulder. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this mostly screwed down now. Okay, and now the spring wants to slip onto the head, onto the shoulder. So let's go ahead and get it as best we can there. Okay, and I believe the spring is still under. The head of the screw and it is or under the shoulder of the screw there we go let's see if that's enough to get it out from under there and yeah okay we've got that part latched in and we'll try it one more time to tighten it just a little bit more see if it'll go no it's all the way fully tightened and uh there we go all right, that's got that part. Now we've got to try to set the spring. Let's see what we can do for that. First off, this spring is going to sit right in here. Let's go ahead and oil the spring. And let's put some oil in here where the spring is going to ride. And then set the spring in. Now, the spring has got these little tag ends on it. One points up and one goes off to the side. Well, the one that goes off to the side is gonna go into this little slot right there. And then the spring's gonna drop into the hole like that. Okay, the next part that's gotta go in, it's gonna be this, and that tag end that's sticking up on that one has got to go into this hole right here. So it's gotta go in like that. And then what we're gonna do, is we gotta get it to come up and over all of this 
but still managed to stay in the hole of the spring. Okay, and so we're gonna flip this little lever out of the way and get this to drop down like that. Okay, we're still in. We'll get this over out of the way and let's see if we can get, yeah, get that hole to line up right there. And we'll go ahead and get a screw started. And we gotta get it to sit on the shoulder of the screw that lever out of the way and we'll get it to screw down all right there it is there's the trip lever wow <laughs> it's got a lot of force you do not want to get your finger in the way of that one okay put some oil here we'll put some oil more oil here on the back side we are going to put some oil under the head of this screw and put a little bit right here so it comes in on the bottom of the lever. So the lever has got lubrication. And there we go. Keep your finger out of the way of it. And there it is. And we're going to come back over. We've got this clean now. Let's go ahead and set this into this hole. And then we're going to come back over here. Let's undo this nut right here, remove the locking washer, and we're gonna slide off the roller, and we're gonna add a little bit of oil there. And I took a wire wheel to this and cleaned it up good, so that that wheel would spin easily, and it does. Okay, and we're gonna slide this back in the hole here, like so, put on the locking nut, or locking washer, and then screw on down the nut. Okay, now we gotta look. Okay, this is a really good fit. This this bale's never been bent out of whack. It's in good shape. Okay, so we're gonna come back to this side now. We're gonna set this back on over here. Set that down in there. And this this will be rotating as it see how it rotates there. That'll be moving. And we're gonna put this nut back on. Or this screw, sorry. Tighten that down. Let's put a little oil under here and a little oil under the head. And let's take a look at what we got. Okay, it locks in place. Keep your fingers out of the way. There we go. Okay, I think that's going to be fine. We'll move the rotor out of the way now and let's get back over here to the main body. And I've got these parts dumped in here because that's basically what all this is for. All right, this one here, the spring, is going to go in back here. It drops all the way in back into the back like that. And then it's got one single screw that holds it in place. And this screw is light enough that we should be able to use the grease trick to hold it while we stick it in. And the hole's misaligned again. Okay, I do have a special purpose screwdriver just for this kind of situation. It will lock onto the head of this. And I try not to use it because most people don't have one. Okay, and I try not too much, although I do use the parts cleaner. Most people don't have one of those either. Okay, slide that in. That got it started. I do like screw starters. I just try not to use one if you guys don't have one. All right, it's got that in now. You see the spring is bent. I bent it over just a little bit, so it's putting tension against the cam, so that, that lever will have some tension against it. So let's go ahead now and slide that in. Let's put some grease on this. And let's slide this into the hole and see about getting 
the handle back on. Well, gotta get it in the hole first. <laughs> okay, let's see here. There we go. Oh, I see. Let's see if this has any effect on that. Let's try to move this over just a hair. All right, what's happening here is the very end of that spring is bent and it's touching the wall and it's keeping it from doing its spring action. And I wonder if that has something to do with why the anti-reverse wasn't working. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab hold of the tip of it just a little bit and try to twist it around just a little bit so it's not there. Now it's free to move and it's not hitting on the wall. So let's add a little bit of bend there, okay. Now let's go back and try to put that in. I think I'll use my needle nose pliers to do this. Okay, slip it down into the hole like that. Okay. And all the way down like that. There we go. Now we should be able to put this handle on. Like this. And then install the screw. Okay, that has a very positive feeling now. And I greased where the cam fits in, but I didn't grease the face of the cam where it rides against the spring. So let's put some grease on there. See what we got. Okay. Oh, that feels much better. Okay, now we have this piece. Now remember I told you back in the beginning when we took this apart that this lever had to be in this up position for this to go back in. So let's go ahead, before we do that, let's put some grease on this post right here where this is going to ride. And let's put some grease on the back side of this and a little on the end of the hole. Give this as much shot as it can of working properly. Slide that little arm inside that cam back there and then slide that down. Well, that would look really good if this spring were on the back side, but it's not. Okay, so let's take that back off. And let's try it again. This time we've got to get the spring back there. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of lever the spring back. While we set that in place. There we go. Now the spring is behind it, and that should be giving it a nice spring motion and hopefully that's going to give us an operational anti-reverse it looks pretty good okay let's go ahead and add a drop of oil on that post and I think we're ready to grease the main gear and put it back in do not lose this little shim washer off of it come back to here now one thing i did have to do i don't know if you noticed it when i took this out but this was binding really hard trying to come in and out and what i did is i polished this surface right here this had been where the handle was tightening down it was causing this to mushroom slightly and i polished this off with a piece of uh, 15 thousandths or 1500 sandpaper and uh, it fits inside the case much better now All right, let's go ahead we're going to oil this surface and see if we can get this to go back in there easily. There we go. There's no forcing it in and out now. That's good. All right, what I want to do in order to keep this in place is I want to take and see if we can go ahead and attach the handle. back out all right the handles now that now now that gear can't fall out all 
All right, we'll see about tightening that once we get it the rest of the way back in. Now we've got the pinion gear, and this pinion gear looks like it's stainless steel, and it's a very nice pinion gear. And we're going to go ahead and grease it up. There we go. And I'm going to oil this surface and this surface, this uh, bushing in here. And we'll slip this pinion bearing, pinion gear back in and get it to lock in. There we go. Let's go ahead and slide this back in. I think we were good. So I think we're ready at this point to put our rotor back on. Set that in place. And now I've got this piece here. I had to clean this up quite a bit. It had a lot of rust on it. And it's got a keyway. Look at the, see the center of it, how it's keyed to the shaft. Well, the rotor itself is also keyed, but it's not keyed to the shaft. It's keyed to this. So we got to put this on on the flats and then we've got to rotate the rotor around to get this little notch to line up with that key weight right there okay so we've done that we can go ahead put the nut back on and let's see about tightening that up get my ratchet didn't need it taking it off but we'll need it putting it on Hold this now and tighten this handle. Okay. Now, oh look, our anti-reverse is working. I think we're ready at this point to grease our crosswind block and put it back on. Let's slip it into place right here over this post. Kind of line everything up there. I come back now and oil this axle shaft. Now when we put this in, we wanna rotate it slightly as it going through so that that oil is distributed inside that housing. Run it through the crosswind block like that. All the way back to the rear block, there we go. And I think we're ready to put this pin back in. All right, that's got the pin in. Got this cover plate that goes back on and it looks like I missed a little dirt so stand by all right we're ready to put the cover back on set it back in place we got two screws that go in all right when I was cleaning this axle shaft I removed this drag washer so we're gonna slide that back on and um, I think we're ready to tackle the uh, spool. All right, as strange as it seems, this is the stack up, I believe, that was in this. And uh, it's not a conventional stack up by any means, but it is a stack up that will work. Okay, so what they had was a hard washer followed up by a keyed washer followed up by another hard washer, followed up by an eared washer, and it's called an eared washer because it's got the little ears on the sides of it, okay? Followed up by another drag washer, 
followed by a keyed washer. Now, normally, once you've gone to that, you would have another drag washer and a um, another eared washer. But what they've done instead is they've inserted this tensioner spring in between two keyed washers. Okay, so it's just which that's very different from what the way that's usually done. So that one goes in, and then this one goes in. And if you look at the stack, it's pretty much full. There's not room for pretty much anything else in there. Okay, we're going to go ahead now, put the snap ring back in. There we go. With that done, now we're going to take a moment to look at the bottom of this. This is where I broke this. Okay, and I want to show... Can how this actually is supposed to look when it's operating. Okay, if you look right here, this is the clicker for the drag right here, and this is the clicker pawl for that. Okay, and this clicker pawl is supposed to ride right here like this, and it's supposed to have this spring. And this spring, if I remember correctly, yeah, it was like this. Okay, so this spring goes around here, like so. Then, this piece, the clicker pole, goes in here like this. And would slide down. And I think they made this piece so that it could fit either a left or a right hand design. Now, the screw would go in there to hold it in place. And then this spring right here is supposed to come up and over this post and drop onto this side right here. And that way, there's your click. Okay, so that's how this is supposed to work. Unfortunately, Klutz me in his impatience broke the daggone screw off. So it's gonna have to be drilled out. Now what I did manage to do well, I thought I did anyway, is I came up with another screw for it. And uh, I'm going to send that along with it, if I can find it again. Okay, now, in the meantime, these are going to go into a box. There's the broken screw right there. And there's, of course, where it broke out from. All right, when all this is back together, then this fits back onto here. Rotate it around until we line the keyways up with the key on the um, let's see, none of my keyways are lined up. And normally, keyways will just align themselves as you rotate around, but this is such a large keyway that it doesn't want to do that, it wants to turn instead. That should be close enough. And it should go pretty much all the way down, which it's not doing it. There we go. Tell you what, let's add a little lube. <laughs> See if that helps. Because it looks like it's all lined up now. There. That did help. Okay, and then the drag knob goes on. And there's our drag. But we have no drag clicker because I broke the screw off. Okay, let's see if we got anti-reverse. Anti-reverse works. Anti-reverse override works fine. Back to anti-reverse. Okay, now this looks like it's dirty up here. What this actually is, this was originally painted silver to match the rest of this, and most of the paint is gone. So if you scrape that, what you do is you end up taking silver paint off. So we'll, uh, we'll let Ken worry about whether he wants that and figure out what colors he's gonna use and everything else. Uh, this is a very, very heavy duty reel. I believe Chris Jenkins told me he's got several of these. And uh, we're gonna pack, oh, one thing I wanna finish doing is I need to tighten down this nut the rest of the way and make sure 
that the veil will trip. And it does. That's a nice bait. Okay. And there you have the Sears Roebuck 779.414221 spinning reel. Uh, nice reel. I like it. Uh, unfortunately, I was impatient and I broke it. And uh, we're going to send it on to Ken and let Ken do the finish up work on it and clean it up. And I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Tell me what you didn't like about my video. Um, and for now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, signing out.